Hey Ryan, where are we? We are in Oklahoma. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go kill some pigs. That's right, folks. We're gonna kill some pigs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh. So back in the summer of 2019, um, I felt the urge to head down to Oklahoma to go on a hog hunt. I had done a hog hunt in 2015 with a group of friends and had an absolute riot. So for a few years now, I've actually been considering going on a hog hunt down in the southern United States. I looked online, looked at different outfitters, tried to uh, do some research, and... Uh, you know, could never make a decision on what I wanted to do or find somebody that would actually go with me. So in 2019, I was guiding in the Northwest Territories and there was kind of this seven week gap between my guiding gig up there to my guiding gig here in Manitoba with Burtail Waterfowl. And I decided that I was going to start to try to plan a trip to Oklahoma. And that's when I reached out on Facebook just asking if anybody was interested in joining me. So when I saw Ryan made his post, you know, July 2019, they're asking if somebody would be interested in going on an Oklahoma hog hunt. I obviously, I jumped on the opportunity. Had never met the guy, but you know, we've gone back and forth on Facebook a little bit. We seem to have very similar interests and we are both obviously hunting and fishing guides. So, you know, it's a perfect fit. And then December, Darren and I met on a local trout lake here. We figured we better meet before we decided to take a 20 hour drive together. We had a great time out on Course to Fiend Lake. Darren got a really good episode of Darren's Northern Life where he caught his personal best rainbow trout. And then within a week, we were on the road to Oklahoma. We made the 20 some hour drive up to Oklahoma, went through a nasty ice storm. It was, yeah, it wasn't the greatest drive, but you know, we had good company, listened to some good tunes. We got to the lodge and things had definitely changed from the five years previous I'd been there. They had done a lot of work, it was set up way differently, it was set up a lot more effectively and efficiently. We met our guide Zach and he uh, showed us around a little bit, we sighted in our weapons. I was going to try to cross bow hunt, um, Darren wanted a bow hunt and uh, we got settled in the blind immediately for the first day. So we showed up there midday, got our bows sighted in and very quickly we were out in our separate stands hunting for our first hogs. So he set me up in a ground blind um, right near a feeder. There didn't take very long for hogs to come in. I had him come back and forth a few times that I wasn't able to get a shot. Finally, just, just near dark, I don't know how well it got picked up on the camera in the low light conditions, but I ended up taking a shot at a you know pretty beautiful little hog actually. Not, not heavy, maybe 80 pounds if I can remember. Walk over here and see if we can find some blood. But I ended up shooting it quartering two and hitting it a little further forward than I wanted to basically and the, the, the arrow drove into the, the shoulder socket, maybe a little low, um, and broke off. So I never got an opportunity in the end that evening. I had one hog come within 35 yards. I actually called him in with my mouth. It was really cool to do. I'd never done that before. I could hear the hogs working around back in the timber, but there was just so much natural food back there. They didn't want to come to the feeders. They were feeding on acorns. They were doing their hoggy things back there. I did see my first red deer though, which was really neat. Um, he kind of surprised me, he came out of nowhere. You'd think a big animal like that, you hear them, and up here you do, you hear a big animal plow through the bush. But down there with the lack of underscrub, I didn't even hear him until he was right there. While I was not having a lot of success, Darren did have an opportunity at a, at a hog and he put an arrow into one. So we went back and we tracked a little bit that night and uh, we just weren't able to find him and, and Zach felt it was a good idea to back out knowing the, the reputation of wild hogs to be a little grumpy when they're not feeling well. So we backed out and we were gonna go pick up the trail the next morning. It's the morning of day two, as you guys can see. This is my broken up arrow from last night. I don't know how much footage from last night is actually usable, but we're gonna go now and we're gonna see if we can find the pig and hopefully do a spot stock on another one. I don't know if I'll use a bow or the rifle, but anyways, 
Let's get going. The guy's waiting. So this hunt for me wasn't anything special. Uh, I'm actually primarily a meat hunter. I don't do a lot of trophy hunting anymore. Um, so for me, I just wanted two hogs that were good eating hogs. And the day after Darren had uh, shot that boar, we were driving down to go basically go look for Darren's hog. And I spotted a hog off the buggy. And this is a high fence hunt. It's nothing special. Normally at home, I would never consider doing this. But I figured, why not? I want to get a hog down, at least get one down, and, uh, and then go from there. No, I think that was the one. It's a pretty good one right on the hill right up here. Oh, yeah, they're, they're looking like spotted. I think it's a spotted one. Oh, yeah, it's not there. Shot. Knock him down? Yep. I couldn't even see. So, yo, the first shot, one hog down. We're celebrating, we're kind of enjoying it, and we walked up to it. And all of a sudden, and I don't remember who it was, if it was Zach or Darren, they noticed another group of hogs coming in on us. And it had another one of those 110 to 130 pound eater hogs in there. And, you know, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to shoot two basically spotted hogs, not your traditional black ones. And uh, I figured it would make a really cool photo. So I pulled the gun up, lined it up, and took the shot. Again. goes. Wow, you got the Oklahoma double. Two spotted pigs, Two man. Two spotted cool. pigs, yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Thanks, man. Thank you. And that's how it gets done. That's right. <laughs> Gone. And my second pig. Not as big as the first, but it'll still eat. I don't remember the shot angle, but I think it must have been quartering away if it's, I put it in there. Yeah, that'll eat nice. So after Ryan got his couple hogs there, we went back into the enclosure and uh, did some searching. Ended up finally finding that pig. All right, well, I think we found it. He survived till the morning. I think he must have had a tree branch or something and poked himself, so he's kicking over here. But ended up finding that hog. Ryan stayed back with a camera and we walked up to it, obviously, with the guy's rifle. It uh, definitely didn't go exactly as planned. All right, well, it's pretty crazy. This freaking pig lived all night with an arrow, and now when we saw it here running around, we saw it running five minutes ago, literally five minutes ago, and it must have it must have poked something and. It was laying here kicking, but I had to finish it off with a rifle, which is kind of exciting. <laughs> At eight feet or whatever it was. Be a good eater pig. So high fence hunting is something that's fairly controversial. Um, I'm definitely neither for nor against it. I believe that there's a place for everything. You're in essence... At, you're in essence grocery shopping when you do that style of hunt. It. Uh, it's, it's not an overly challenging or difficult hunt. They all have their place, and as long as you're honest with the people when you tell the story, in this case, we're telling the story to you, that's really all that matters. Some people are probably gonna say, oh, you're hunting high fence. And I will say, you know, I never thought I would actually do it. But in this situation, as Ryan would often say, we went grocery shopping, and we did. That's what it was. I grew up on the farm. You know, we would raise hogs shoot them, process them ourselves, make our own sausage, everything. And this is basically what this was. This was about the meat and about having good times. We, you know, we just drove 20 hours to do it. 
I asked a little bit and they explained to me how their whole system works and they actually buy these wild hogs from local trappers that trap the hogs and then they release them into these big enclosures. They're not in small enclosures, big enclosures where you actually have to, you do actually have to do some hunting for them. So it actually creates, you know, a bit of local work, uh, put some money into the community and, uh, you know, I can feel good about it. Will I ever do it again? I don't know. So once we had the hogs processed, hanging up in the cooler, we ended up going back out that afternoon, early afternoon, for a spot and stock hunt. Ryan came along for a while and then he uh, he went to go do some fishing and he might have had a beer or two, I'm not sure. So I ended up giving the camera to the guide, he was happy to help and we ended up walking for I don't even know how far, went all through, it's, it's a big property, we went all through it towards the end of the day, it was actually, it was almost sunset, we ended up finding a pretty decent boar and there was just no way we were going to get close enough to it, so he uh, he handed me the rifle. Smoked him. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, oh! Got that on video. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I was probably jumping around like a little girl. Well, guys, as you can see, um, this afternoon didn't quite go as planned, but I ended up with a pig. It's a boar. He's got some pretty good tusks, actually. Not huge, but he's got something. I don't know what he would weigh. Probably 160, 170, if that. Maybe a little less. But either way, pretty cool. Got him shot with a guide's gun. I really want to thank Bowtie Hunting Ranch for the amazing hospitality, the amazing service. That cabin they put us up in, or house, I don't even know what you want to call it, it was so nice. Um, you know, they really went over and above what they needed to do, and that was very much appreciated, even if it was just a short hunt, but as a hunting guide and fishing guide, you're, I'm, I'm always on the other side of it, so it was nice. Don't ever think that going on a hog hunt or any high fence hunt is is something that you don't want to do until you actually experience and i guess that would be the final piece of advice it uh it isn't as easy as you think if you really want to chase a trophy animal and uh and even if it is easier oh well you get to take some tasty meat home so in closing i would just like to thank my buddy ryan for inviting me on this trip we had a blast and i think we will continue to have a lot of fun in the future thanks for watching